Hi everyone, in this Top Tip Tuesday video I am going to guide you through this ArcGIS online tutorial, Thematic 3D Extrusion by Philip Milka. This blog post will show you everything you need to do, but I am hoping this video will provide an extra hand if you are still getting familiar with the ArcGIS software. So the first thing to do is to log in to ArcGIS Online. So I do that with my ArcGIS for Schools account and I want to open the map viewer so I click map at the top of the page. Now that's done, I'm back in the tutorial and I'm downloading the sample addresses. So I downloaded a copy but this is important. I open up the local copy because this is an Excel workbook and I save a second copy and make sure that it is in CSV format. So this is my local copy and then I'm saying save. Choosing the folder that I want to save it in, make sure that's somewhere that you can easily find it again and choosing CSV and save. So here you can see it in the folder and I grab the CSV file and I drag it onto my map viewer. So it will locate the features in the CSV by address or places and I'm just changing that drop down from my default of Ireland to the United States and I'm clicking add layer. So the features get symbolised automatically and I'm changing that to just show the location. Then I'm saving the layer so that I can access it again in my contents page. I'm calling it sample addresses table and you have to provide tags anytime you create an item in ArcGIS Online. You can choose a folder to save it in and of course give it a summary. I am just writing in that this is related to the tutorial, but of course, if this is another topic, you can make that more appropriate for you so that you know what this is for. So create item. So we're going into the analysis tab, clicking on manage data and choosing generate tessellations. The blog post does tell you everything you need to fill in here, so take a look at those screenshots and follow the instructions. But this is just another way to show you what I'm clicking on. And you can see here I need to remember to click the distance icon so that I can choose meters. And then I give the result layer its name. One thing I don't do here is to show the credits and you can take a look at that but of course the, the credits allow you to carry out these analysis tools and I highly recommend that you give them a go. You can just keep track of how many each analysis tool uses. So back in the analysis tab again, clicking on summarize data and aggregate points. This tool has filled in the layers already for you but it's important to untick that box to keep areas with no points. So untick that box and then provide a result layer name again. And then we run that analysis. So now you can see the count of features within each hexagon. So I can untick Redlands hexagons and then we only see the hexagons that have a count of points. So under Redlands hex count, I'm going to show item details, which will open a new tab and we can see the item overview page for this layer. Clicking on the data tab, and we can see the features in this layer in a table format. 
there's a count of points field and the grid ID. So if we click on count of points, we can show a detailed view of that attribute. This is where I take a slightly different approach than what is written in the tutorial because we're going to add a field. So I go back to the fields view by clicking fields on the right hand side and then add to add a field. So I type in here height for the field name and display name and change the type to an integer. And that is written in the tutorial. So I click on height just to have a more detailed look at this new attribute that we have added in. But back in the table view, click on height and click calculate. And we are going to choose Arcade, which is a language that will be used to calculate the value, the height value for each kind of points. So I've clicked on the feature point count and that can be clicked on from the right hand side and then I type in asterisk 100 and click OK. And this is all explained in the tutorial. This is simply just to show you what to click and you can see that the height attribute or height field has now been calculated for each value in the table. So the greater the kind of points the greater the height value. So from the overview page, we clicked on open in scene viewer. So here we are in your scene and initially it does look quite similar to how the data looked in the 2D map viewer. But we're going to change the layer style of the Redlands hex count layer. So change it to 3D counts and amounts and choose options. We're changing that middle value on the ramp to 25. And then the height is the height field that you have just added into that layer. Clicking done. We then remove the terrain 3D from the ground. And we'll change the base map by clicking on the base map icon on the right hand side. So the next part is to create slides. These are like bookmarks in your scene. But this is where it gets very interesting and this is the purpose of the scene so that you can look at your data from a different perspective and of course see it in 3D. You can use the right click of your mouse to move the scene just as shown in the video at the moment and clicking on any of those features will open the pop-up. So we're adding in a couple of slides and this means that when somebody else looks at your scene, they can click on those slides along the bottom of the viewer and be instantly zoomed into that location or looking at a particular uh, part of the data. So we can see that the height field is being used to extrude this data. So the greater the count of points in each hexagon, the greater the value of the height and therefore the more it has been extruded from the ground. We're just saving the scene here and giving it a title, tags and summary, choosing the folder we want to save it into.
now that the scene has been saved successfully, we can share it. When we click the share icon, we are prompted to change the share settings. So when we click on that, we're taken to the overview page for the scene. Click share on the right hand side. We can choose to share the scene with everyone. You'll also be asked to update the same sharing settings of the layer that is used in the scene. So back in the scene viewer, we can copy the short link and we'll paste that into a new tab. And the scene will open up. So extruding data like this is a really clever and interesting way to quickly see where is the most of something. So yes, you can look at buildings or parts of the landscape in 3D, but it's a really interesting way to visualize features that have a value. So it's easy to see that the, the taller the column, the more points there are in each of those hexagons. This is us just back in the tutorial. So thank you, Philip, for putting this together. It is a great walkthrough and really helps us use the scene viewer. So thank you and good luck, everyone. Thanks for watching.